This is Sean Gallagher for Ars Technica. Already this year, North Korea has launched 15 ballistic missiles in tests, including what appears to be an intercontinental ballistic missile and two intermediate range ballistic missiles. Additionally, North Korea recently tested what appears to be a thermonuclear bomb. The combination of a much more deadly bomb and missiles capable of potentially reaching the United States mainland has seriously upped the stakes for the United States military's ballistic missile defense capabilities. Perhaps the most important part of those capabilities right now is the U.S. Navy's Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System, or Aegis BMD. The Aegis system, deployed on nine U.S. Navy ships in the Western Pacific currently, as well as four Japanese destroyers, has the longest range interceptor missiles in the region and has successfully been tested against targets outside the Earth's atmosphere. The other defenses deployed in the Pacific, the Terminal High Altitude Air Defense System, or THAAD, and the Patriot Advanced Capability 3 missile system, are only really suited to medium and short range defenses. The Patriot is the only real battle tested system of them all, but it has only been used against shorter range missile systems and never against a nuclear threat. Unfortunately, the latest escalation comes with the U.S. Navy down two Aegis ships in the Western Pacific. The collisions of the USS John McCain and the USS Fitzgerald took the lives of 17 sailors, and they also reduced the U.S. Navy's ballistic missile defense capable force to five Arleigh Burke class destroyers and two older Ticonderoga class cruisers. The Aegis system uses the SPY 1 radar system, which consists of four 12 foot octagonal phased arrays of sensors capable of tracking an object the size of a golf ball out to about 70 miles, and tracking ballistic missile warheads at ranges of out beyond 180 miles but it can also use other sources of data to target its interceptor missiles as well. And the latest version of those interceptors, the Raytheon Standard SM-3 Block II, has a range of about 2,500 kilometers, or 1,350 miles, twice the range of previous Aegis interceptors. The SM-3 is a hit-to-kill interceptor. It has to collide with its target to destroy it, the equivalent of hitting a bullet with a bullet. The SM-3 Block II was designed specifically with North Korea in mind, allowing Japan to defend itself with fewer deployed ships because of the greater coverage area. It's also being deployed along with the rest of the Aegis system on land, so far in Poland and Romania, as a defense against potential Iranian intermediate range missile attacks. Japan is planning on building an Aegis ashore system of its own. But for now, the defense of much of South Korea, Japan, and Guam depends heavily on the U.S. Navy's ships to be in range with their interceptors. The temporary loss of the McCain and the Fitzgerald reduces the number of interceptors that could be launched at any given time in response to a North Korean attack. Aegis would likely not be much help in defending it from an attack by North Korea with an ICBM against the United States mainland. Because of the altitude and path of an ICBM launch, Aegis ships would have to launch interceptors very early in the missile's flight, requiring them to be dangerously close to North Korea. They could provide tracking data, however, to help assess the threat from a launch, but the actual defense against an ICBM would probably fall to the ground-based mid-course defense system, which uses interceptors launched from California and Alaska. Unfortunately, that system has a much shorter history of success in tests than Aegis.